in mixes like this, like every rock mix, the side chain is super important. You listen to mixes by cats like Zach Servini, he's got that side chain just fucking cracking. Like every kick, every snare is like dipping out the entire mix except for vocals pretty much. And it creates this really powerful, huge sounding drum event every time that something hits, which I really like. I'm probably not gonna go that intense, but we are gonna see how much movement this brings to the mix and how much clarity and punch this is gonna bring into the mix. I have a bus set up called Kick Side Chain. It's just always living in my buses. I keep it there just right where it pops up and it's gonna go on my kick bus. It'll either go on my kick bus or if my kicks are getting super roomy, which in this song, there's probably not gonna be too much room, but I'm probably gonna stick it on a kick that's more direct because when you're sending a side chain to something, you want it to be a shorter sort of signal. You want the compressor to listen to just like the initial hit and then respond to that. So I'm gonna stick it on this track. And the first thing we're gonna side chain, the classic is gonna be bass. I prefer to use the Pro C2 auto off. That juices the gain up and makes it weird. So I'm sending my kick side chain to the input of this compressor. Down here, I'm gonna activate it and now we're ready. So I'm gonna start really extreme and then back it down. That way we can find the settings we like. And I'll go back to the first part of the song. I'm gonna juice the bass up so we can really hear this. That wasn't bass. So that's a lot, right? That's way too much here. So I'm usually looking to do maybe three to six dB. And what's really cool about Fab is there's all these different settings. I like the punch setting. It gets in, it gets out. It's pretty quick. The release time, I usually keep very low. But we're not listening to that, we're listening to the whole mix. Okay, let me turn the bass back down. And while we're on bass and getting kick out of the way of bass, I'm gonna do one more thing. With kicks versus bass, there's two things you can do. Here's the kick, here's the bass. Let's take a look at what they have in common. Okay, pretty much everything, right? They have everything in common. So there's two things we can do. We can decide I want my bass to take up the low mids and my kick to take up the subs, or we can go I want my bass to take up the subs and my kick to take up the low mids. Why don't we start with bass taking up the subs, kick taking up the low mids? So let's see where they have in common. It's probably like 80, oh, 60 and 80 something. 60 and 100, okay but mostly right here. That range, all right. So we're gonna dip that shit out of the bass. We're gonna dip the low mids out of the bass, sorry. Which was around 106 was our punch. Very rough, okay. And then I'm gonna take that. Give the bass a bunch of sub. I'm gonna listen to my speakers really quick because these headphones are not very good with bass. So I don't, I don't like that. I don't think that's serving the song. I'm gonna go reverse now. I want my bass to take up the low mids and my kick to take up the subs. And I'm not saying completely, it's okay for things to overlap, that's natural.
I like that better because I like the kick in this song having more low end. It's tuned so low. So in songs like that, it's nice to have the bass have those harmonics. All right, now we're going to kick it up a notch. Now I'm going to sidechain the rhythm guitars to the kick. And with rhythm guitars and lead guitars, they're way less forgiving with side chaining than bass. Bass is like, you can go pretty hard. Guitars, I like to keep it like around three or lower if I can. kick just now it's like it's like opening this envelope in the song which i love that sound and we're going to keep going i'm going to throw that on lead guitars too and now the kick is like it's there it might even be too loud now and it's going to go to production less on production less on leads And while we're there, let's let's hit it on percussion too. Let's hear the chorus where we got a bunch of shakers and stuff. Okay, last sidechain thing, I'm gonna do the snare. And specifically, I want the snare room to be brought out. So we're gonna change the attack and release settings to let that happen. I'll show you really quickly. So I need to make a new bus, meaning I'm gonna take an old bus and rename it. Let's find some mono. Vocal three left, perfect. We're gonna call this snare SC, gains at unity. Let's hit bass first. I'm just gonna drag that up, change the input, and let's adjust. Well, the snares are already out, but okay, here. So I'm not as worried about the snap of the snare getting through. I want the decay of the snare to get through. So I'm going to lower the attack and I'm going to change this just to normal. So it's not as punchy of a knee. So now it's kind of skipping the attack and it's just ducking the bass out when there's release. So I want that room to pop through. So let's hear it on guitars. After compression, the side chain should always go last. And once again, I think I'm going to put this side chain on a more direct snare rather than the whole group because the whole group is really long. So I'm going to put it on my shortest snare, which is my snare top. throw on the leads too. kind of gets to thwack through a little more which is nice so those are the side chains that i usually like to set up for drums to punch through 